create success and how can we create success? Well, we need to make sure that we have the right mindset and attitude. Everything starts with our attitude and with that we need to determine our goals and we hear so much about that in the business but it's no different here with MA Web Centers. Once we have our goals, we want to create an action plan and we will talk a little bit about that in your trainings as well. And then it just comes down to doing the right activity and following our proven system. And through doing the right activity, you will develop your skills in communication and appointment setting and being able to uh, be a much better unfranchise owner and web center owner by learning how to listen and offer the correct solutions. In many cases, all of this can be put together, but if we don't hold ourselves accountable to the right activity, we may never achieve our goals. So let's review that again. You need to have the right attitude and mindset by having the right goals to create the right action plan and then just follow the system by doing the right activity. And through that, we can hold ourselves accountable to success. So the first thing that everyone should do is make sure that they have a schedule and you need to know when you're working. You need to know when you're working, uh, maybe you're a full-time job or occupation, maybe you own your own business, but you need to know what your schedule is so that you can perform the activities. Uh, things like getting on a training uh, like tonight or attending a live training or a certification or going to a convention, but also on a daily basis, knowing when you have some time to meet business owners. When do you have time to show the business plan? When do you have time to make some contacts or phone calls to reach out to potential business owners and candidates. So you see on the screen a blank calendar and I recommend that you have a blank calendar and then fill it in as the first activity that you can do to make sure that you are successful. You need to know when you're working. The second thing that you want to do is go to our resource site, www.mawc. 411.com and make sure that you have the correct downloads. So one thing I recommend is following our 12-week action plan. In the 12-week action plan, every single week, it gives you some education and training to review. It also gives you some tracking so you can write down who you're contacting, what type of prospect or candidate it is, did you book an appointment, do you have a follow-up, and it can go for the unfranchised business, a retail customer, or a website candidate. So the 12-week action plan can help keep you on track and each week it gives you an exercise as well as this tracking sheet to make sure that you can follow up and we know that follow-up is so important to succeeding so if you have just started your web center business this is a great way to stay on track or maybe you've been a web center owner and you're looking to um, improve a little bit one way that we can do that is making sure that we are prepared other things that you want to download and have available are your 15 minute consultation sheets, all the questions that you wanna ask business owners to make sure that you can set qualified appointments. The other thing that you'll want is our B2B services catalog, as well as our Mac marketing manual. These are all tools that you can use during your appointments, but also helps get you that right attitude and mindset so you know what we offer. So now that you're prepared for success, you know when you're working, you've downloaded the resources, and you're following your weekly exercises, the next thing to do is to take action right? It all comes down to having the right attitude, activity, and skill. So once you have the right mindset, you're going to improve your skill by taking action. And action and activity leads to results. Without action, you will not have the results you're looking for to achieve your goals. So the most successful web center owners follow what we call the five C's. And we'll talk about each of these in more detail. The first is having a list of candidates. You need to identify leads or business owners that you can speak to about their marketing solutions. So we need to identify who we know. We also want to then do some research on where they are showing up currently. Currently online, do they have a website? Do they not have a website? Is it mobile friendly or mobile responsive? Are they showing up on search engines? Are they showing up on social media? How are they showing up in their online presence? Now we have some information about them. We then are gonna contact them and invite or approach them to have an appointment, to have a 
10 to 15 minute conversation to learn more about their business and we call that the consult. We're then gonna conduct that 15 minute consultation. It could be in person over a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, or it could be a lunch meeting, or it could just be a phone conversation. And it's just to get to know their business more so that we can offer the appropriate solution through MA Web Centers. And from there, we're going to book an appointment and close them into speaking with our product specialists at MA Web Centers, where they are gonna do the sales presentation. They're gonna sell the client on our website solution or potentially our digital marketing products. So let's talk a little bit more about each of those. And during this webinar, I want you to take some notes. I want you to have a pen and paper, and I want you to start thinking to yourself, who do you know? So the first thing that you want to do is make a list of people that you know that own a business, potentially a restaurant, right? Who do you know that owns a restaurant? Who do you know that's a contractor or a service-based business? Who do you know that's an attorney? Maybe a, a fitness facility, maybe someone who is uh, in the salon world. They're a hairstylist, a makeup artist, an esthetician, um, maybe someone who works on automobiles, a dentist, a doctor, other health professionals, anyone who owns their own retail shop. So you wanna start thinking, who do you know that owns that type of business and make a list? And you should have a list of maybe 10 to 20 to 30 business owners, but then you're gonna to go to the next step. And who do you know that works at that type of a business? Who do you know that works for a company? Where do you currently work? Where do your family members work? Who do you do business with? So if you need a product or service, where do you spend your money, right? Where are you going for a certain service or product? Those are all potential candidates. And the last column it says is well connected. So maybe you know someone that in your area is very well connected and maybe is well networked and they know everyone. Maybe they're a a community leader, maybe they run an organization, maybe they are in a, a church or temple and they know a lot of people. So we wanna identify all of the people that we know that can lead us to conversations with business owners. So again, here are some examples and you might want to take some notes. Again, health professionals, contractors, landscapers, painting contractors, plumbing and mechanical engineers, auto repair, financial advisors, engineers, photographers, wedding planners, designers, decorators, uh, makeup artists, um, health salons and spas, skincare professionals, fitness centers, lifestyle coaches, personal trainers. Um, let's continue. How about um, uh, painting contractors, we said, how about auto repair um, facilities, mechanics, how about legal providers, uh, financial firms, engineers, uh, we talked about doctors, again, how about chiropractors, acupuncturists, herbalists, dentists, as well as, again, personal trainers, lifestyle coaches in the health and beauty. So the idea is, who do you know that owns those type of businesses? Who do you know that um, works at one of those businesses? Who do you know that uses those services and where do they go? Who is your makeup artist? Who is your hairstylist? Who is your uh, mechanic that fixes your car? Um, who do you know that's well connected in any of those industries? So when you do that, you're setting yourself up for success because now you have a list of candidates. Now I can't guarantee that they are gonna be great prospects. They may um, find that they are all set with their marketing. Uh, but the idea is that without that list, you have nowhere to start. So it's important to have that list because that's where we're going to start and you're gonna to continue to add a couple per day. How about different educational institutions or studios or schools? M maybe there's a school for nutrition or school for a uh, massage or a school for um, daycare for children maybe for dance or martial arts um, or gymnastics. So the idea is that even your schools or even organizations um, that you may know may need a website or some online marketing help. And then of course, where are you spending money? And if you continue to go to the same stores, the same cafes, um, you might wanna start going to some other cafes, uh, some other nail technicians and have someone else work on your automobile or your home because what it does is it opens you up to new people. You can even ask your friends, family, relatives and, and on social media, where do they shop? Where do they go for coffee? Where do they go for lunch or dinner? Where do they go when they need to uh, purchase certain products or services? And try some of them. And when you try some of them, it introduces you to a whole new candidate list of potential um, candidates that can purchase website solutions or digital marketing products. So I'm not saying that you have to um, 
not be loyal to your hairstylist or your acupuncturist, but the idea is that you might want to try some other services or at least know who else is in your area because they can go on your list. And the goal is to add at least two new businesses to that list every single day because we're going to continue to contact and work through them as we start having conversations. And how about nonprofit organizations, different associations and clubs and charities and churches and schools that may need some assistance? And of course, just when you're out and about meeting people, networking and prospecting, you might have a, 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 a party or uh, visiting some family and you're in a social environment or maybe it's more business related and you go to a, a networking event and you want to make sure that you're meeting other business leaders and just getting to know them on a personal level on a social level so it can start that conversation and build the relationship there's a saying that i have and it says people will only do business with people that they know like and trust and our job as a web center owner is first to get them to know us Second is to get them to like us. And lastly, we want them to get to trust us. And that's gonna happen over many conversations and meetings and maybe phone calls to the point where we're gonna build the strong relationship. And when we have that, they're more likely to purchase our services from us and also give us referrals of other businesses. So where are some places that you might meet someone in a what we call a cold market, someone that you don't know already. Maybe you meet them at a coffee shop and, and getting a cup of coffee or a cup of tea with a friend or colleague and you might bump into someone else waiting. Maybe you meet them at a community event, a sporting event, in a social setting like we said. It's a brand new contact that you've never met before, but you meet them in this environment. Maybe it's at a networking event, or maybe you're going to a new um, retail store to, to try something um, new. Maybe it's a boutique and you're trying to buy some new apparel, a new uh, blouse or shirt or slacks, and you're looking to spend your money somewhere else and you might meet that business owner. Or maybe you're talking to what we call the gatekeeper and they're the person that may be sitting at the front desk or answers the phone and that is trying to prevent you from talking with the decision maker or the business owner. Well, you might meet with them in, in another setting and you wanna build a relationship with them because they have a lot of information about the business and you wanna to get to know them on a personal level because they might be the one to introduce you to the business owner. So it's all about making friends and building relationships first and foremost. And once you have that list, we can then move on to the second C. And that's to do some current research. You're going to Google them, um, do some search uh, engine uh, work and try and find out where are they showing up? Do they have a website? Do they not have a website? Are they on social networks? And you can you know, go through many of the social networks. I recommend uh, here in the States, we recommend Facebook. It's where a lot of business owners are. Uh, but you can look at other social networks as well. So what are you looking for, right? You're not gonna spend a lot of time in this phase because you don't know if this person's gonna move forward with an appointment yet, so you don't want to waste a lot of your time, but you do wanna invest a couple minutes going through your list, and maybe you pick 10 per week, and you're gonna do a little bit of research and make some notes. Do they show up on Google, right? Where do they show up? Do they have competitors showing up on Google? And from there, you can click on the link and see if they have a current and up-to-date site. So you're going to look and see, you know, is this site inviting? Is it um, informative? Is it well-designed? Do I like it as a consumer? Do I like it? Is it easy to navigate? And then you're going to check it on your smartphone. And you're going to say, hey, is it showing up on my smartphone? Is it mobile-friendly? And those are very important notes to just take down very quickly. Does the website showcase their work, their services? Are there images? Do they have any reviews or testimonials? And then you can you know, check to see if they have any forms to schedule appointments or submit any feedback. And they might have a link on there for their social media sites, or you can check on the site directly like Facebook, and are they using social media? And are there any reviews? So you can just go through a couple of these or all of these, but the idea is not to spend a lot of time until you have scheduled an appointment with them, then you can go back and do more research. But you certainly wanna identify, you know, first if they have a website or not, as well as is it responsive? I think those are the most important, and then you can check the search engines. So when you check the search engine, you're going to find out are they doing any advertising if they show up in the advertising section do they show up in the local search results with the maps are they going to show up in the organic or the 
um, natural search section as well. And you're going to find out what is showing there. So there's another place that you can find at least two new businesses to add to your list if they're not already on your list. Sometimes just searching for the category. In this case, I put roofer in, in our area, Springfield, Massachusetts, and we we're able to find other leads that I wrote down on my list. So when I looked at it, it's maybe I typed in their business name and they showed up, but what service do they provide? And maybe they didn't show up. So just a couple different ways to identify, um, you know, where they're showing up in their online marketing. Another great place to get some more information to educate yourself is to make sure that you download the marketing manual. And you can find that on mawc411.com. So it goes through each and every industry and category of business, and it shows you what are some strong recommendations for them to succeed with their marketing. Um, you know, what type of website, what should be on their website, what are some best practices on their website, and also, you know, what other types of services, maybe the APN or maybe some other things, maybe through spending on shop.com or some other um, ways that they can save money. So it helps you understand how to make better recommendations for them. I know there's some incredible articles on our blogs and on our YouTube channel as well to help educate you about successful marketing strategies for these businesses. But now that you have a little bit of the information from your research and you've got your list of candidates, now it's time to contact them. And if you give yourself a goal of maybe 10 per week, you're going to contact maybe two per day. It's not a lot. You've done a little bit of research, maybe five minutes on each candidate. And then you're going to start a conversation and contact them as a way to set a qualified appointment. So, you know, when you've done your research, it's important because if you know a little bit about your, your candidate in advance, it can lead to a better conversation. You know what to ask. If you know that their website isn't friendly on a phone or a smartphone, then those are things that you can ask in your conversation. When can you uh, do your research? Well, you want to do your research prior to contacting them so you have some information. Um, again, we're going to Google them, write down some things that you noticed, and then use that information to ask questions. So we do the research to ask some questions. Hey, are you? Are you currently showing up on uh, search engine results? Do you currently have a website? And these are th some things that you already know the answer, but you want to ask them in the conversation. And then you're going to schedule the 15-minute consultation. And in that 15-minute consultation, it's going to help identify some areas that you can help them even more. So doing it qualifies your appointments, and it confirms who actually makes the decisions for the business. And again, you're going to do the 15-minute consultation prior to setting an appointment with our product specialists, or it's also a great time if someone isn't ready to commit to an appointment with the product specialist and sales support, then you can schedule this 15-minute consultation. Again, you can find it on mawc411.com, but you're going to use all of that information to schedule a solid appointment with the product specialist, and you can enter all the notes of the information that you found in the sales appointment wizard so that when you have MA Web Centers on the phone with your candidate, they know as well what the candidate needs in order to assist them in closing that sale for you. So you need to know how you're going to contact them. And the best form of communication really comes down to how you normally would speak with them. If you usually speak with them in person and you see them at their storefront or in their office, then the next time you're in their storefront or their office, that's a great time to contact them. Or maybe the best time uh, or best way is that you usually have a phone call with them. Well, the best thing to do is to pick up the telephone or your cell phone and contact them, call them on the phone. If you're used to using social media or texting them, then that's a great way, or maybe using WhatsApp or some other service, then that's how you're going to contact them. You want to contact and communicate with them how you normally would speak with them. So the conversation is to identify their need. Is there a need and could you potentially help them with that need with any of our incredible solutions? And most importantly, would they be willing to do a 10 or 50 minute consultation just to share some more information? And that's a great way for you to ask those questions to confirm that they do in fact need some assistance with their marketing and then schedule a time where they can speak with one of our product specialists. So these are some bullet points that I like to use when scheduling an appointment. 
I only have a second or a quick moment. I only have a quick moment. The reason I'm calling is I was doing some searching online and I saw your business and I realized that you had a website. I know that you've, step two, edify or praise them. I know that you've been successful in business for years, right? I know that you've been in business successful for years. And then you want to have a power statement. However, I work with a company that helps businesses just like yours actually improve their marketing. I And then you can share some information, right? I'd like to learn more about your business and see how I might be able to help you increase your customers or maybe help you save some money. And step five is very important, right? It builds curiosity. I did some research and think we can help you out. How soon can we talk? Right, so what it does is it lets them know that you did a little research. I found you online. I have some information that I'd like to share with you. I'd like to learn some information from you as well, but I think I can help you out. When can we talk? And it's a great way to schedule that 10 or 15 minute either phone call or meeting, again, over a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, maybe after work for a cocktail, maybe during lunch hours, or maybe it's just a phone call like we said. The idea is it's very easy to schedule these appointments rather than going into a full sales presentation or trying to sell a website over the phone or trying to sell our service. Then we sell like sales professionals. We want to just be consultation professionals. So let's review that again. And I'll say it almost like I would in a call. Hi. Uh, I only have a second. The reason I'm calling is that I did some research on Google and I found your business. I know that you've been very successful in business over the years. I've seen your business for over 10 or 12 years and I've seen you continually succeed. I work with a company that helps businesses just like yours actually improve their marketing and I'd like to learn more about your business and see how I might even be able to help you increase more customers or maybe save you some money. I did some research and I think I can help you out. How soon can we talk for maybe 10 or 15 minutes? So you can see it's very easy, it's very casual. It's not like I'm trying to sell a product or service. The idea is that I just want to learn more about them, but I just wanna get 10 or 15 minutes. They might ask what is it or what's it entail or what type of marketing. So you have to have the ability to answer those quick questions. You know, I work with a great marketing company and they offer anything from website solutions to social media solutions to um, anything that businesses that may need to help improve their business. Again, I don't know if we can help you, but I do know that I did some research and I do know um, that I like to learn more about your business. All I'm looking for is 10 or 15 minutes of your time. And when you do that, again, you realize that their time is important, so you don't want to schedule an hour or half hour unless they provide it. And they say, yeah, you know what, I'm actually available for uh, lunch. I'm available at uh, 10 a.m. till 11 a.m., right? You want to let them share with you what their availability is. But the most important thing after they agree to an appointment time slot is to make sure that it's a solid appointment. Right? Do you see anything in your schedule between now and then that would prevent you from keeping our appointment? I know we're both very busy and I just want to make sure that this is um, a solid appointment for both of us. And it lets you um, share with them that you are a professional as well. You've established that you um, value your time and you value th their time as well. So it can ensure that appointment. So in the consultation, you schedule 10 or 15 minutes, what do you do? Well, it's very easy. You ask questions and learn about them, and you can ask the questions from the 15-minute consultation. So we have a couple different types of uh, questionnaires. One's about website and website design maintenance. The other one is more about digital marketing and social media. So you want to identify maybe a couple of questions from each or just stick to one consultation sheet. And people will be attracted when you show that you care and that you're excited to learn about their business. They're buying you. Again, it's part of building that relationship. So again, you're gonna use these little questionnaires or checklists to help you stay on track and ask the right questions and gather some great information. Now, you might already have some of that information from doing the research online. But the idea is that you're going to write down all the responses that the business owner gives you and you're not going to provide solutions. Oh, we can help you with this and we can help you with that. You're just going to listen a lot and write down all of the responses. You're just going to use it as an opportunity to identify all the decision makers. Who else makes the decision? Is there anyone else that would be important to talk to about your marketing? Get them excited to discover some potential solutions. You know, so as I mentioned when we uh, spoke, 
we actually work with a uh, large company that helps businesses just like yours. What I would like to do is schedule some time with our product specialist, our website specialist, our social media specialist, our search engine op optimization specialist to answer your questions because I think that we can help you based on our conversation. Right, so you're just going to schedule the next appointment with a product specialist with MA Web Centers. So it's a successful meeting and consultation if you book a follow up, have your schedule available, and book that next step. You schedule an appointment with the product specialist to address their needs, and then after that, you're going to send them a little thank you note. Thank you, it was nice to meet you, and I can't wait for our meeting on, you know. Tuesday afternoon with the product specialist. So you don't have to really worry about selling anything other than selling an appointment with our product specialists, right? It's as simple as making a strong referral. You're gonna make sure that you put an emphasis on the fact that you work with a great company. They've been in business for over 17 years. They've hosted hundreds of thousands of uh, sites and they help local businesses just like yours. They're gonna to talk to you a little bit about making sure that your website is responsive and mobile friendly, or they're gonna speak with you on how to make sure that you show up in the search rankings. So whatever problem that you found in either your research or your consultation, you're gonna bring that up as the way that the product specialist is gonna help solve that need. It takes the pressure off of you to answer the question because you are not the product specialist. You're gonna edify the product specialist to really be the one to answer and address those questions. So what you say is gonna depend on what you learned in your research and in your consultation. So now it's time to really leverage our teams of professionals like sales support, and of course our design center and our customer care. So you don't wanna feel like you have to do any of the hard work you just build the relationship and refer the right teams that we work with. So what I'd like to do now is actually go through a couple case studies that we've pulled up um, and just share some stories and then we can have some questions and answers. So this uh, company, Sugar and Spice Catering, was a former client. They actually uh, had a website with MA Web Centers. They bought this um, as an update for a responsive design. So the initial conversation was just to review their current marketing. I know that you're one of our clients, but we'd like to make sure that we uh, review your current marketing to see if there's a way that we can improve. So on the first uh, conversation with product specialists or sales support, they were already a client, so it was very easy to upgrade uh, with a responsive design. And from the design, they've uh, gotten more reviews and testimonials and more customers. So they went from this website initially to this one, and this is a great design um, that we did for them years ago, but we realized that it wasn't mobile responsive or mobile friendly, so they recently purchased a design and you can see it now. They uh, changed their logo and made it very easy for people to see the menu on their phone, and it's very easy to view on a mobile device, so very important for this company, Sugar and Spice Cafe, so you can see that it's mobile friendly as well, whereas the other website, we'll go back, was not, so that was a beautiful site, but it still wasn't responsive. So when we bring it to the new one, you can see that when you scroll down, it's very easy to view all the menus and things like that. And of course, there's a nice video uh, as well, a little slideshow. So MA Web Center's design team did a wonderful job. How about this Banana Leaf restaurant? So the owner of Banana Leaf was an old client for, um, design services, right? So uh, this is uh, Shwen Lim. She actually did some graphic design for this uh, contact, right? Did the menu, gift cards and flyers. They had an existing website for a long time and, and her husband and their manager did it and as business was good, it didn't really need to be updated. So a couple of years went by, uh, the owner decided it was time for a change. So uh, Schwen did a 50 minute consultation, uh, looked at some of the features and benefits and looked at the website, You know, asked some great questions based on the questionnaire. And they, they did a walkthrough at the local cafe uh, with sales support. And unfortunately, uh, due to cell service, it, it wasn't very good. So they booked a follow-up appointment. And in that follow-up appointment, they sold a classic design package, custom coding for a reservation form. They also sold local search engine optimization package. And they able to use downloadable menus and password protected area for their staff to log in. And also added in their Yelp reviews in the photo gallery. So it went from this scenario 
to adding reservations and password protection to now this brand new site. Again, beautiful, uh, responsive design, can see it on any di device, whether it's a desktop computer, a laptop computer, a tablet, or a smartphone. Um, here's another, um, this is more of a service or contract business, a plumber. Um, they actually serviced uh, one of our web center's owner's homes. So she realized that their Google results when she searched for them was poor. So she simply asked if they were open to evaluating their online marketing. Um, they had no leads from their existing website, this website that you see on the screen. So the appointment went very well because they saw the value. And from this uh, increase, uh, the business uh, showing up in search engines, they're now getting calls from showing up on Google. So you can see you know, a little bit of an enhancement mobile friendly and of course some lead forms and they can call uh, the company right from there. Um, the company purchased a local search engine optimization package and from that they'd already been with four different website companies and search engine optimization SEO providers and then when they partnered with us it stopped. They didn't have to search for any other companies because as a small business they've done so well that they've actually hired two more employees or plumbers in the past 90 days after launching their SEO campaign with MA Web Centers. So the growth due to the leads via the website that we created and overall exposure played a huge growth um, in, in their year this year and made them get so busy that they need to hire more uh, plumbers. Here's a, a great e-commerce client, right? So it was an original graphic design client. They did some research and found that their competitors were showing up on Google, but they were not. So the uh, web center owner found that the, no one was handling their social media or marketing for them. And the majority of their time was spent fulfilling their orders. So they were always so busy with the operations and packing boxes and shipping boxes for their clothing that they didn't have time to worry about their marketing. So um, it was easy to ask them about their marketing and their e-commerce. So they had multiple follow-ups because they were so busy, but six months after the initial contact, they did in fact purchase uh, this e-commerce website. So how about this um, uh, supplement company? Um, during the research, uh, found that the history of their website and the internet was very limited. Um, couldn't put products on Facebook from their old website. It was a doctor, had a variety of products to sell, but there's no e-commerce and the health professional, the doctor, wasn't in control of the website. So every time that he had to make a change or an update, he had to wait on his web designer, web master to be available to make those changes. Um, and the doctor couldn't make any appointments online. So it was um, very cumbersome and, and hard. And this this was the new, look at the difference in the design, right? This beautiful web design, um, again, friendly on any device, device so it is responsive. So it was a referral. It was a referral that came from a business partner. So this web center owner uh, had a referral from one of their uh, friends that was also a business owner with Market America and shop.com. Uh, I believe this was actually down in uh, Mexico with Eddie Sarit. So the first contact with the candidate was just, uh, you know, friends over dinner. And during the first contact, it was just to set the appointment for a consultation, um, but just kind of keep it uh, very friendly and casual. The second contact was online and a, a conversation and just started with questions. You know, what would you change in your website that you have right now? What features would you like to see on a new website? What do you use your website for? What do you like about the website that you have? And the main focus was on issues that they expressed during their dinner meeting. So the focus during their consultation was to try and get as much information necessary to provide to our product specialists. Wrote down and took notes on everything, keeping control of the conversation by asking questions. The appointment went very well, and the product specialist focused on the needs, which they already knew based on the notes in the sales appointment wizard that the web center owner put in there. During the appointment, the product specialist mentioned other functionalities that the doctor might want based on some of the questions. So the result was, you know, the company was not able to be found on the internet. They couldn't share products on Facebook. Um, now they're all online, e-commerce enabled, in control, can make changes themselves and helping their business grow. So a beautiful e-commerce solution, very, very professional um, 
uh, display here for their e-commerce. So some of the things that I like to recommend based on our conversation today is to just go through, schedule your time and know when you're working, right? Know when you're gonna work your web center and unfranchised business. You need to download and print your 12 week action plan to keep you on track. Review the marketing manual and the B2B catalog. At that point, you'll be prepared. Once you're prepared, you wanna make your list, your list of candidates, and have at least 20 or more, adding two per day every single day. Do some research, and again, I recommend if you're just getting started, you're looking to succeed, keep it something manageable, maybe 10 per week. So if you have 10 per week, you split it up and you do two per day. You're gonna do two uh, research candidates per day and contact two per day. If you're a little bit more advanced, you wanna connect and reach out to five per day, maybe three for your web center business and maybe two for unfranchised prospects. And then you're gonna use your assessment sheets and your, for your consultations to jot down some notes. And all you have to do is focus on that part of the process and the rest of it takes care of itself through our system. So follow the system and you can't help but succeed. So I'm gonna turn this back over and then we'll have some questions and answers as well. So I wanna thank you for your attention and learning